and over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Maharaj, you are mute. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah, I just noticed something you chanted, and I was wondering if you would chant it again. Um, it's the Panchatattva Mantra. Could you chant it again for me? Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwait Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. It's also called Maha Mantra. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, hmm. So we go to the verse, which. Is, <laughs> Okay, because these are presented in the prose, there is no meter for chanting the prose. Sometimes we do, when we are in class with devotees, we do the word for word, but I don't know if we can do that word for word online. Um, I guess we can. I'll cite and say it, and you just respond to my statement. Um, you can all keep yourself on mute and just respond where you are. Jambu. Jambu. Plaksa. Plaksa. Shaumali. Shaumali. Kusa, Kusa, Kronstja, Kronstja, Saka, Saka, Pushkara, Pushkara, Samgya, known as Taysam, Taysam, of them. Parimanam, measurement, Purvasmat, Purvasmat, from the former, Uttara, Uttara, the following, Yata, according to, Sakyam, number, Dviguna, twice as much, Manena, with a measure, Bahi, outside, Samantataha, all around, Upakliptha, produced. Translation, the names of the islands are Jambu, Plaksa, Shaumali, Kusa, Kroncha, Saka, Pushkara, each island is twice as large as the one preceding it, and each is surrounded by a liquid substance beyond which is the next island. Purport. The ocean in each planetary system has a different type of liquid. How they are situated is explained in the next verse. So we'll go right into the Keep going. We'll go right into the translation. The seven oceans respectively contain salt water, sugarcane juice, liquor, clarified butter, milk, emulsified yogurt, and sweet drinking water. All the islands are surrounded by these oceans, and each ocean is equal in breadth to the island it surrounds. Maharaj Priyarat, the husband of Queen Bahishmati, 
gave several sovereignty over these islands to his respective sons, namely Agnidar, Agnidra, Agnidra, Idmajiva, Yagyabahu, Hiranya Reta, Gurta Prista, Medatiti, Medatiti, and Viti Hotra. They all became kings by the order of their father. Purport. It is understood that all the Dwipas or islands are surrounded by different types of oceans. And is herein that the breadth of each ocean is the same as that of the island it surrounds. The length of the oceans, however, cannot equal the length of the islands. According to Miraragava Acharya, the breadth of each first island is 10,000 yojanas. One yojana equals eight miles. And therefore the breadth of the first island is calculated to be 800,000 miles. The water surrounding it must have the same breadth, but its length must be different. Om Gyan Timiranda Syan Kinajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Padati Swam Padati Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Timamine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Taru Vizcha Kripa Sindhu Pe Vacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasani Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So each island is twice as long as the preceding one. So the first one is 800,000 miles. So the next one is 1,600,000 miles and then double that. So you see. <laughs> that uh, the universe is quite fantastic in the sense that it's unlimitedly <laughs> big. <clears throat> this is just this universe here. This universe is considered to be the smallest of all the universes in existence. One of the smallest. According to the size of the universe, Lord Brahma has a particular number of heads. So the Brahma in our universe has four heads. And then on up as the universes become larger. So then uh, there's millions of heads of Brahma where there are universes that are so large, they are immeasurable. But this is Krishna's creation. When you speak about greatness, you don't really say anything. If you say God is great, it doesn't tell you anything. Just like you might say, well, this person here, he did a great job. Or this person is great. Or this person has great qualities. You don't say anything, really. You just give an indication of something. So when you say great, you have to really describe what it means in terms of explanation. So here, this is a little bit about the greatness of Krishna as being the source of all existence, both material and spiritual. He's, he creates these universes that are unlimitedly, just like it says, if you travel at the speed of sound for 40, 40 million years, you may reach the end of the universe. <laughs> so the speed of sound, I forgot how fast it is. It's very fast. 
186,000 miles per second or something like that. So traveling like that for millions of years, you still won't reach the end of the universe. So Krishna is unlimitedly great, but as he says in the Bhagavad Gita in the 10th chapter at the very end, after describing himself in relationship to what is the great things within creation, you know, he says of Himalaya, of mountains, I am the Himalayas. Of aquatics, I am the shark. So out of all the great things in existence, he's, he's put different, what we say, characteristics into that. You don't have to go into that. You can go to the last verse if you want. Go to the very end. Yeah, the trees and the banyan of sages, I am this. But he says, know that all opulent, beautiful, and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. What he says in the previous verse, there's no end to my divine manifestations. What I've spoken to is as a mere indication of my infinite opulences. And then he ends by saying, what use is all this detailed knowledge, Arjun? What a single fragment of myself I pervade and support this entire universe. So we get a little idea of how great God is. <clears throat> of course, we can't really ever understand the greatness of God. In fact, Prabhupada said, even Krishna doesn't know how great he is. <laughs> In fact, it says that he is always as everything is unlimited, his greatness is also unlimited. And that means that his, he's becoming greater and greater. He doesn't stay just one way great. He just continues to become greater and greater and greater. <clears throat> he's not static in his greatness. He's reached the end of his greatness. Now, his greatness is always expanding. So one, when we speak about God, we speak about something that we have no idea. <laughs> Just like Lord Brahma said, some people say they know you. And that is very nice. <laughs> but as far as can, I'm concerned, I don't know anything about you. <laughs> so here's Lord Brahma, whose intelligence is much greater than anyone in the creation he has great intelligence he says i don't know anything about you <laughs> so what do we know our existence is so insignificant and here we're also describing as something about his the the greatness of his creation when this uh, fifth canto came out and in publication, <clears throat> it shook, it shook even the devotional world. <laughs> and this is one, only one of the many things that people couldn't, you know, hear or understand. <clears throat> and Prabhupada put it out and Prabhupada had a lot of, what we say, challenging because the common persons are growing up with the scientific understanding of things and still being affected by those misconceptions when they heard Prabhupada's uh, explanation, which is not Prabhupada's, it's the Srimad Bhagavatam itself. <laughs> it's coming from pure sources, coming from Krishna himself. We even, even certain devotees couldn't under, couldn't, couldn't accept it. <laughs> There's one humorous story, <clears throat> which just shows how devotees were thinking in those days. <clears throat> it was around the time of the, when uh, the United States was, do, was doing all this space travel <clears throat> and they were sending these, uh, rocket ships to the moon, at least they were saying that. And Prabhupada in 1969, he was in Los Angeles, he got on a radio show 
and there was an interview. You can still hear that interview. It's interesting. <clears throat> Prabhupada's talking to the, the person running the show, and it's a question and answer. And Prabhupada says, uh, they didn't go to the moon. And that was at a time when everybody was saying, oh, this moon landing is so amazing. Just see, they're on the moon. And they had all these films of these guys in spaceships kind of floating along on top of the moon surface. <clears throat> it was some, some kind of cartoon. But everyone was taking it as some, some real photos. And Prabhupada said, we never went to the moon. <laughs> he said, you know, it was simply a ploy by the scientists to draw money from the public. And that's all. They spent $5 billion on the space program. <laughs> So there was one devotee, I won't mention his name. He's no longer practicing Krishna consciousness, at least within our society, but he was sure that uh, we went to the moon. So he would argue with Prabhupada and Prabhupada would give his answers. And, but he kept saying, no, no. And then he would, she, they would be the pictures on television, just see, and Prabhupada said, it's, it's not real. <laughs> so finally, one day he was in the kitchen and, and he was cooking for Prabhupada, I think he was, yeah. And the ghee caught on fire, the ghee on the stove. And obviously the flame was too high on the wok. So the ghee started to, to actually smoke and then it caught on fire. And, uh, and then uh, he tried to put it out. And all there was all this black smoke. And some of the devotees came to help him. And so he, he got full of black smoke all over his face and his clothes. <laughs> and so Prabhupada had heard there was some problem in the kitchen, so he called the devotees. So they came. And this devotee who was uh, one that was the one he was sure we went to the moon, he came to see Prabhupada and his face was covered with smoke, black smoke, and his dhoti was all black. So Prabhupada looked at him and said, oh, you went to the moon. So, <laughs> so probably was a little humorous there because he didn't appreciate that so much. Uh, so, but the point is that it sounds from our perspective quite fantastic when we hear these descriptions. But you can use the analogy, it's like, <clears throat> You've seen ants. Ants, they're very intelligent. They know how to work together to build a little, you know, an ant hill. And if they want to transport food from place to place, they line up and they, they go in lines. They're really organized ants. People study ants to see how, how, how much they work together in an, in an organized fashion. So, we could say two ants are talking to one ants is talking to another ant. And one ant says to the other ant, my dear fellow ant, you know, I'm sure there's something up there that's bigger than us. And the other ant looks at him and says, come on, you've been eating too much sugar. So, example, two ants are trying to discuss the fact that there are something above them. They can't perceive it. So in the same way, our ant-like existence here in this material world is, is very much the same. We are so small and so tiny, and we are trying to understand what is beyond the realm of existence. So the scientists, they're getting their microscopes out, their telescopes, 
and they're all in their big, big experimentations and come up with all these theories about what is the universe, what is beyond our you know, purview of vision. But Prabhupada says their senses are imperfect and therefore the instruments they make in order to see beyond are also imperfect. So we're always getting from the scientists, we don't get any kind of clear understanding of anything. They're always changing, changing, changing their ideas. Just like there's one scientific theory that was accepted within the scientific realm for 35 years. After 35 years, they had to throw it out because they realized they were mistaken. And it was called the mirrors effect. The mirrors effect was something Einstein told people that it would actually be like that. But the scientists using their own observation felt it was something different. So the mirrors effect says that using your telescopes and whatever else, you look up into the cosmos and you see particular, what we say, uh, planets or, or some something floating in this in the, uh, the cosmological you know, realm. And you, you see it, and then you designate it, you describe it, and you locate it. So they were doing that, that this is, this is what we see, and it's located here. This is what we see, it's located here, like that. But after 35 years, they finally accepted Einstein's understanding of what is called the mirrors effect. And that is that when you see an object in a particular place, because of what is called the mirrors effect, is that the object is being reflected by light and the object is millions of miles from where you actually see it. So after observing many, many, what we say, things floating in the, in the cosmos, they had, to really, they had to throw it all out, all their theories, because they, they're all wrong. So those of you who know how scientists work, and maybe there are some of scientists out there in our little discussion, they're always changing. And, and change doesn't mean scientific fact. Prabhupada said science means observation and experimentation. So they can't really experiment because their observations are all based on their imperfect senses and imperfect instruments. But when Prabhupada put out this particular fifth canto, and it, it get, you know, you'll get more of these, uh, uh, what we say, hard to understand un, uh, theories of existence. You'll find that it creates a doubt in the minds of others. Maybe we also, have these doubts that this is the actual reality. But uh, there is two types of ways to learn knowledge. One is called Avaroha Panta, and the other one is called Aroha Panta. Avaroha means going up, and Aroha means coming down. So knowledge that comes down from the perfect source is perfect knowledge. And knowledge that is gained by empirical observation using sensual, uh, sensual uh, means for experimentation, logic, hypothesis, like that, uh, research is always imperfect. So we accept that this knowledge is 100% correct because it's coming from the perfect authority. It's coming from Krishna himself through the hearts and minds of his pure devotees of the Lord. Like that. Now I can give you another example, just like, 
some there is these statements where Lord Brahma, he has four heads. So we've never seen a being with four heads. And then of course it says he has, in other universes, there's more and more heads. So you may think, how's that, how's that understandable? But for those who are skeptics, who see everything in the, what we say, the, uh, <clears throat> what's the, the realm of length, breadth, and width, um, there are people even on this planet who are born with two heads. Sometimes there are people who are born with more than one arm, more than two arms. Uh, just like I actually know of a person who has six toes on one of his foots. I saw it too. It's not like... <laughs> It's not like it's something uh, unusual. I know he's a devotee and on one foot he has six toes. <laughs> not five, six. Uh, he's also a great preacher too. So this, I'm using this as an example to show that if you find something out of the ordinary and you can observe that this is something that is not the norm, then take that same principle and apply it in an extended way. And then you can understand that, yes, it is possible. Not only even from the logical point of view, we're using logic now, that there are people, beings with more than two arms, more than 10 heads like that, because if you can, understand that there is something out of the norm on this level, then take that same principle, it applies all the way up. So um, that's for that, that's not for the devotees, this particular example, it's for those who are skeptical about what they read in the Shastras and think it's imagination or eulogy, some kind of fantastic thing just to just to get people involved in reading it or excited about it. Now, actually, Bhagavatam is complete factual knowledge. It's coming from the highest source. So we have no uh, basis to doubt anything. Our only basis is our, only, our own skepticism, which has no basis at all. <laughs> But therefore, in understanding Krishna, in understanding Krishna's creation, it has to be given to us through the process of bhakti. Bhakti awakens the, or broadens one's consciousness and the ability to receive knowledge. As one makes advancement in Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> one can understand more and more about Krishna. That understanding goes beyond the theoretical concept of what we read, but comes in the form of re what we say, realization. We can realize just like, why is Bhagavatam given in, in a certain way, where we start off with Sarga and Visarga, creation and sub-creation. And why is the 10th canto, which is Krishna's sweet pastimes in Sri Vrindavan, given much later? There's a reason for that, because unless you understand carefully that Krishna, that same Krishna in Vrindavan, who plays with cows, steals butter, uh, you know, steals the clothes of young girls in, in the place where he lives, Vrindavan, is very mischievous and does all kinds of things that are, that look ordinary, but at the same time are not ordinary. And he's a cowherd boy. He likes to play. He likes to uh, herd cows. 
So when people hear that this is the conception of God, they think this is, you know, this is some kind of, you know, storyline. But that's why Bhagavatam is given to us in that same sequence because that same Krishna is the, the cause of all causes. Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Nanadirana Govinda Sarvakarna Karna. So by, if you want to approach Krishna in Vrindavan, first you have to have a clear understanding of Krishna being the source of all existence and creation. Otherwise, when you go people who are quite enthusiastic to skip the early parts of the Bhagavatam and go right to the 10th canto, they can't understand because they don't understand the whole Krishna. They just take this one principle of Krishna and Vrindavan. And that's only for the self-realized souls. Can understand. So to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead is, is, is impossible. We can't do it, but we can get more and more of an understanding, enough understanding where we can actually serve Krishna in spontaneous attraction for Krishna. As we learn about Krishna, our attraction for him becomes more and more natural. And in that natural attraction, the, the service attitude increases unlimitedly. So that is the nature, but God can never be fully understood. He's so great and beyond our ability to understand, <clears throat> upon anyone's ability to understand. Um, he's become Lord Chaitanya just so he can get a little understanding of his own, his own self from his pure devotee, Srimati Radharani, who is attracted to him like no one is attracted to him. Her attraction is perfect, complete, and superior to anyone. And her service to him is also. And therefore, in order to understand her love, he becomes her in the form of his mood in the incarnation or the manifestation of the Supreme Godhead in the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha, Krishna, Nohionya, Radharani and Krishna have become one in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, but we should try to understand God. That is our duty. And that will increase our attachment for him as we try to understand him more and more. There's different uh, categories of how to understand him. Understand how he relates to his devotees. That's very fundamental to our own development. How much he's protecting his devotees, how much he cares for his devotees, how much he's relating to his devotees how much he interacts with his devotees, how much he's there with the devotees 24 hours a day. That we can learn. That's very important. And of course, Krishna's pastimes were all attractive. There was one very uh, intellectual society coming out of the uh, country of uh, United Kingdom, the UK, and uh, this um, society was called the Mensa, M-E-N-S-A, Mensa Society. They were the topmost intellectuals within the country, and they had formed a society to discuss various types of philosophical, spiritual, practical just topics. <laughs> so, Sham Sundar Prabhu, Prabhupada's uh, disciple, arranged for Prabhupada to meet with a group of these men in London when Prabhupada was there in 1973. So Prabhupada is talking about the greatness of Krishna. And they're listening. There's a group there. But finally, one of them asks, okay, Swami, 
if you say God is so great, then can he create a rock he can't lift? So it's, it's, a, it's a trick question. Can he create a rock he can't lift? And Prabhupada understood what they were trying to do. And Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna can create a rock he can't lift, and then he'll lift it. So if you say, no, he can't create a rock he can't lift, and it, that means he, uh, you know, that, that curtails his creative power. And if you say, he, he, if you say yes, then he then, then that curtails his, um, you know, his physical power or his lifting power. The Prabhupada was so intelligent amongst these intellectuals that he said, yes, he can create a rock, he can't lift it, then he'll lift it. So don't try to uh, become more smarter than the pure devotee because he'll make you look quite silly. <laughs> so, yeah. So God is great. And here is we're getting a small, insignificant, as Krishna says in the 10th chapter, this, this creation of the material existence, which, which comprises many millions of universes, is just a tiny spark of my splendor. <laughs> And, and the, the material creations are one fourth of existence. The other three fourths are the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is three times larger than the material realm. So uh, we can't imagine what the spiritual realm is like. We can read about it in the Bhagavatam and in other scriptures like that. Right now in, uh, in Mayapur, the devotees, based on the fifth kata, with thorough study of the fifth kata, there was a kind of a competition that was presented by the ISKCON leadership amongst the intellectuals in our society to come up with an explanation of Prabhupada's fifth canto that we could use as a basis for create, for building the temple of Vedic planetarium. And so um, many people, not many, well, you know, a good number submitted papers and two devotees seemed to have it. They came into the finals. One was a lady, I don't remember her name. And then there was one devotee from Australia, his name was Unterdweep. Unterdweep actually got the commission because they accepted his uh, understanding as being the most correct one and the most in line with Srila Prabhupada's fifth canto. So he was commissioned to explain it in such a way that they used that as the basis for developing the uh, because when you read the fifth canto, you might also get confused on what Prabhupada is actually presenting because there are apparent, uh, apparent contradictions in the presentations. But all, all the contradictions are apparent on one level and are amalgamated into clear understanding on a higher level. So unless one has that intelligence, they'll become confused when they hear and read Srila Prabhupada's books. That's why you have to hear, and you have to hear with the explanations that are given by the Acharyas. Uh, everything should be accepted as it is, but then again, in order to understand it, we ask questions to those who can give answers. And then we get clear understanding like that. 
So the TOVV, the Temple of Vedic Planetarium, is a presentation of really the fifth canto of Srila Prabhupada's uh, explanation. Uh, well, his texts are there. The texts are not Prabhupada. The texts are actually Bhagavatam, but Prabhupada gives the explanations in his Bhaktivedanta purports, which he is delineated from studying the explanations of the previous acharyas, such as Jiva Goswami, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, uh, Sridhar Swami, and many others. And I think there is one particular acharya who really commented a lot on the fifth canto. So yeah, the fifth canto has always been a problem for, not a problem, but a source of contention amongst uh, devotees and uh, particularly people who want to find fault with our movement. They look at the fifth canto and use that as an opportunity to find some fault. Prabhupada stuck to what he presented. He got challenged not only by devotees in our movement, but people on the outside also. The Prabhupada presented this is Krishna's creation. Okay, so we'll leave it at that and see if there's any questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj for such wonderful pastimes of Srila Prabhupada and to give us the idea how great God is. So thank you so much Maharaj for uh, such a nice class. So now I will request devotees if they have any questions, they can ask Maharaj now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam, or is it possible to hear me? A little louder, please. Mm -hmm. one, give me one minute. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dhanavad Pranam, thank you so much for the wonderful class, Maharaj. Uh, very relevant to uh, our daily study also of the Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. So Maharaj, uh, I do have a lot of difficulty uh, explaining some of the purports, even in Bhagavad Gita, where Srila Prabhupada talks about Darwinism and the theory of evolution and all that. Mm. So uh, when we are discussing amongst ourselves, the people whom I'm discussing with, they are actually students in biology and uh, physics and astrophysics. So they find it very, very uh, hard and they are not convinced. So, and, and so because of that, they kind of uh, are not able to get into the bhakti uh, aspect of uh, you know, they're not able to get into the real uh, meaning of what Srila Prabhupada is trying to explain sometimes. So mm -hmm. how can we, how, how can we help? Mm -hmm. When Prabhupada was in Russia, he had one extensive discussion with one professor, Professor Katovsky. And Professor Katovsky was a very gentleman-like man but he was a hardcore communist. This was in 1971, and communism was very strong in Russia. Um, and one thing Prabhupada said that raised the eyebrows of Professor Katowski because, you know, Prabhupada is a theist, and Professor Katowski is an atheist. And, you know, so you got a theist and an atheist talking so Prabhupada said, 
there's no actually no difference between what you believe and I believe. You believe in what Lenin says, and we believe in what Krishna says. So the principle is the same. We're all we're both accepting higher authority. Professor Katasi was really amazed to hear that point, and it really struck something in him. Yes, I'm accepting Lenin, and you're accepting Krishna. What's the difference? The idea is we have to accept authority. So the people you are dealing with, they have their authority. But when, then again, what is the nature of that authority? Is that authority perfect? We're, we're getting knowledge from the perfect authority, Krishna coming down through his pure representatives to the civic succession. So when it comes to the facts, you'll be going back and forth. You can also try to discuss the facts, but you'll never come to any, any conclusion because they'll say what they believe and you say what you believe, they have their reasonings and you have your reasonings. You go on for hundreds of years just discussing. But the principle is, what is the authority of each? So our authority is perfect. And therefore, we can accept whatever comes from the perfect authority. And that's the principle. Based on that principle, we can accept anything that comes because we know the authority is there. Krishna is perfect. And therefore, whatever he says is perfect, whatever he, his pure devotee also says is perfect because it's coming from Krishna himself. So that is the basis of how to make a differentiation between what is truth and what is not truth based on the quality of the authority. Their authority is the scientists, which are, like I mentioned in my earlier part of the discussion, their, 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 their theories, their experiments, they're always changing. Nothing remains the same. And they say, yes, we're getting closer to the truth. Well, that means you're a student also. You can't be in a role of a teacher if you don't know. Teacher means one who knows. If you're teaching something, it has to be right. If you're saying, I'm teaching you this, but it may not be wrong, but it's right now, it may be wrong, but it's right now. <laughs> what kind of teaching is that? It's, it's just, it's, it, no, no intelligent person will accept the fact that, well, you don't know now and you'll know in the future. <laughs> it's like Prabhupada used to say, you owe me a million dollars you don't have the money, but you give me a post dated check that in 20 years you can cash this check. Would any intelligent person accept the check? <laughs> well, the scientists, all their theories, ideas, experiments are all based on, you know, imperfect sentence, hypotheses, you know, empirical. empirical collections of data, which means, you know, you, that's why even this, amongst the scientists, they don't even agree. One studies from one angle, one studies from another angle, but we don't have that problem. Whatever Krishna says, that's it. That's the truth and we know it. And we, and we, and we don't have any problem with that. So that's the basis of your discussion with these people. What is your authority? Is your authority perfect? Our authority is perfect. Well, they might say, how do you know your authority is perfect? Well, he's God. <laughs> because he's God, he's perfect. Again, it's like the two ants discussing one says, there's something up there. The other one says, no, nah, there's nothing up there. OK. 
Thank you so much, Maran. Yes. It's based on accepting the perfect authority. Is that clear? Yes, Maharaj. Very clear. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. You can use that in discussing with people who have that scientific yes. uh, understanding. Yeah, so what they say is that, see, we are dealing with, um, I mean, one of So one of them is uh, one of them says that okay we are dealing with evolution on a day to day basis like molecular evolution that is what she, her subject is so she's like how can you say that the whole theory of evolution is wrong and we just get into an in depth discussion which I have I mean I am totally unfamiliar with so uh, that yeah that's oh, why. If, yeah. uh, if, uh, but this helps a lot. Humans have evolved from apes. Well, if that's true, why isn't it not happening now? <laughs> yeah, you can, even Darwin, Darwin wrote a paper to one of his friends towards the end of his life. He said, you know, everything that I've presented is simply based on my ideas for he actually said that he's actually not even sure what he actually presented. And then if you want to take Darwin back even further, I understood Darwin was commissioned by the British to do this work in order to give the superiority of within the races. When they were trying to colonialize the world, they wanted to use Darwin's theory to show that they were the superior race and they were coming to give something to the rest of the world. So this was a type of uh, what we say, mental, uh, uh, what is it? You know, this idea of superiority of race is by studying Darwin, that's what you come up with. One race is better than the other race. And that's why there's so much racism in the world today, because of that. They believe in this Darwin thing. So Darwin is actually was given that, that service by the British to write this for their colonialization of the world. And he did it. He came up with this idea, these ideas. And later on, he said, it's all theory. He had no, no factual evidence to anything. There is one book. It's called Nature's IQ. If you really want to get into seeing how, uh, how Darwin is completely off, get that book. It's called Nature's IQ. It's done by two devotees in uh, Hungary. And they put it, this book, this book is being suppressed because actually we made a documentation on this book uh, a film, a full-length motion picture film, which we're trying to release in the United States, but it's not getting anywhere because the, the powers that be are suppressing this, this thing from getting out. But the documentation is also there too. I, I have a movie on it too, based on that. Plus the book, Nature's IQ is the most interesting book you can see the intelligence of, you know, the different levels of species. And based on that intelligence, you can see that actually it's, each species is distinct and not a continuation, continuation of a, the previous species, which is the Darwin theory. This, if you want this video, I can post it and so the devotees can look at it. This was more like a intro video. It's not the actual video that we wanted to release in the United States, but it's, it was something that was made as a, a promo for the, for the actual movie.
That would be great. Huh? That would be great. Yeah, it would be great. I'll, I'll, but uh, somebody can post the information on the book. The book is called Nature's IQ. It was published about five or six years ago. Um, I can't remember the authors because I don't have my, the book with me here, but it's, it's the most interesting. I read the whole book and it's just the most amazing. Maybe you can find it. In nature's extraordinary behaviors, it's all about evolution. Great book to read. Even if you don't have that kind of scientific interest, you read this book, it'll, it'll spark it. <laughs> Thank you so much for the detailed explanation, Maharaj. Yeah. Please share the video. Send, yeah, I can send the video. I have to send it to one person. So who can I send it to? Please share with Shamagauri Mataji. Mataji will share it with all of us. Okay, I'll send it to Abhi, Abhiram Saka. That's, I have his uh, email. Thank you so much. And also, Lavanya Guru Maharaj, please, so that we can also get it, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll send it to Mother Lavanya. Thank you. It's, I'm pretty sure it's it's not something you can send by email. It's usually big. I'll have to send it by Google Mail. So it may take a little time. It's really amazing when you when you. But I think the book's more amazing than the video. Both are interesting. <laughs> Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, yes, yeah. yes, Darwin's ancestors were definitely apes. <laughs> we say, yes, Mr. Darwin, you have come from an ape. <laughs> Prabhupada said, our, our ancestors are the great Acharyas that have gone before us. These are our ancestors, not animals. Okay, any other questions? Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. My question is this. If we do come across an atheist, is there any point at all engaging in a discussion or we should just try to uh, not waste our time and just go on to our next service? Yeah, you waste time. If, if the atheist has his followers there, and it's a public discussion, then you're really, you're really giving your philosophy to the followers because the atheist will never change. In this age, as opposed to previous ages, people don't have any, they wear their philosophy as their false ego. So even if you defeat it and it becomes obvious, they don't change. But you have to understand it's not so easy to defeat these people because they have all their arguments. So you're wasting your time. Okay, thank you. What about people who are impersonal aspects or do we, well, yeah. Yeah, you can talk to the impersonalist because 
logical discussion of impersonalism will show that impersonalism is an offshoot of personalism. If you can make the connection, then it's worth it the time, worth the discussion, right? It depends on the person, you know. If people are inquisitive, yes. If people are argumentative, then you're just you're just gonna waste your time then. So. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Maharaj. Yeah. Maharaj, like on theory of evolution, uh, like I have read uh, in Prabhupada purport somewhere. So our understanding, uh, like just correct me uh, if I'm wrong, that, uh, that our understanding of evolution is that that person goes from one species to another species as we take repeated birth. And that's how we evolve to a higher consciousness species from a lower consciousness species based on our uh, desire and our karma. So, so in that way, is it a right understanding that every jiva is born in a lower species when they come to this material world and slowly they progress towards a human body or they can come directly as a human body as well? Well, they can. It says... There's, do, there's different statements, but uh, in the lower species, there's no karma. And the point is, you have to understand all the species are there from the beginning. It's not that the species evolve from one after another. They're all there, 8,400,000 species were there at the time of creation. So the soul is going from one form of life to another until it reaches the human form of life. And when it gets to the human form of life, then it can get out of the cycle of birth and death. But uh, in one place, it says that when the living entity falls, they fall to the position of Lord Brahma. And then they get one birth as Brahma. And then from there, they fall all the way down to the very basic. And the lowest is the aquatics. From the aquatics come the trees, plants, insects, and then higher up are the birds, and then the beasts, and then the humans like that. There's five categories of living entities. So the general statement throughout the Shastra is that living entity falls to the lowest, and then it goes natural evolution. That's why it's sinful to kill any living entity because if you kill a living entity in a lower species, say you step on an ant, then that soul that was in that ant body has to come back again in that ant body and live out its life as an ant because it didn't finish its time in the ant body. So therefore it becomes, you're interrupting its natural evolution. So therefore it's sinful to kill, kill any living entities. But the natural evolution is arranged by the Lord himself. So one goes from the lowest species all the way up until they get to the human species. And people come into the human species from three animal forms, from monkeys, from cows, from tigers. Out of those three forms, one can come to the human species from the, one of those three forms. That's the highest form of uh, lower species of these three, tigers, monkeys, and cows. Cow is the highest. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj, like yeah. this, like, yeah. This is all part of Prabhupada's explanations. You can hear it on his lectures a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Like this explains why in Kalyuga human population is increasing because so many cows are being killed. So is that all them born as a human being? Um, not necessarily, no. I 
it's really that you can't really understand because even Krishna, he says the uh, the workings of karma are too difficult to understand. But Krishna doesn't explain them. How a soul takes birth in another birth from a human life, where they go from human to another form. You can't really understand that because there's so many factors that it will be available. And that's just, that's simply determined by, by the material energy. Material energy does that. Material energy provides the body for the next sojourn. But what, what birth you get next is usually what is your prominent consciousness throughout your life, which manifests at the time of death. So if you like to eat anything and everything, and you don't have any discrimination for eating, and that's been your way through your whole life, most likely you get a body of a pig. If you are, uh, I don't know, very much uh, attuned to offending people based on what you have, then you might get a body of a dog. Dog is always barking at everybody else. They're very territorial. <laughs> if you're attached to your house and you spend all the time in your house, then you can take a body next life in the same house as a, a mouse in the same house, you know? You, a human body is only given if you're worthy of a human body. So the soul can go up, the soul can go down. But if we engage in some devotional service, then we're guaranteed a human body in the next life. So to really discuss the intricacies of karma, you really, even Prabhupada doesn't touch it. Krishna says it's too difficult to understand. Right. I'll give you an example in the Mahabharata. This is an interesting part. Uh, Dhritarashtra, you're familiar with Dhritarashtra, the Mahabharata? Yes, Mara. Yeah. So Dhritarashtra, you know, he had a hundred sons and they were all killed and he was born blind. So then at the end of the battle of Kudushetra, he approached Krishna and he said, my dear Krishna, you know, I was born blind. I had a hundred sons and they all died. Tell me my karma. Krishna said, well, in uh, 50 lives ago, 50 lives ago, you were a hunter and you shot a flaming arrow into a nest of birds and there were a hundred birds in the nest and they all died. And the mother bird got away, but she was blinded by the, the fire. So then Dhritarashtra said, whoa, 50 lives ago, why so long? Krishna said, well, it took you 50 lives to get that much good karma when you could get a human birth and have a hundred sons and then your karma crashed or came, you, you collected your karma. Just like if you, if you owe money and you don't have any, you can't pay it. But then as soon as the money comes, then you pay your debts. So karma is like that also. Mm -hmm. Right. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Very well. Is it audible? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Maharaj. I wanted to ask a question. I just wanted to uh, just uh, previous in previous classes, one Mataji was explaining that if if we have to please Krishna, we have to know about the likes and dislikes of Krishna. 
बट इन बट कृष्णा इन चैप्टर नंबर फाइव और भगवत गीता इन वर्स नंबर थ्री इज They can tell you what he likes, what he doesn't like, how to serve him, how to please him. So that's our process to approach Krishna's representative, the spiritual master, and you ask your questions: how to serve Krishna, how to please Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Krishna is a person. But to learn about him, you learn about him from the spiritual master. Thank you for Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, Mr. Abhijit, and all glories to you. Um, this might, uh, uh, this kind of question has come up a few times from in the very beginning of my Krishna consciousness, and I didn't know how to quite explain it. There were some. I, I was at the that Museum of Natural History in Chicago, and uh, there were some paleontologists. They were giving. Um, explanations of the different layers of rocks. And they were saying, well, you know, at this particular period, you only saw dinosaurs. At this particular period, you only would see birds, etc. How do you explain to them that all of the species um, came at this, that Krishna created all these species at the same time when you don't find like human Fossils um, at in different rock period, uh, rock formations over the uh, millennia all over the world. Yeah, Prabhupada answered that because the Vedic culture they don't they don't bury the bodies they used to burn them. Therefore, there's no you know they would burn the bodies and throw the bodies into the the, the holy river. So, you know, so they they just want to study bones, you know, or rocks. <laughs> we study rocks and bones, you can't understand how, you know, very super intelligent people existed in the past. It's, it, it's, it's dog theory, just digging up bones. And uh, digging up rocks. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and they're not just talking about human beings, but other types of species. You know, where oh yeah, we we didn't see whales at this particular period. You know, in the fossils. Um, you know, uh, at one time the Sahara was an ocean, and there were all of these. Different it's thoughts. all speculations. They're always speculating on this and speculating. Hypotheses, speculations. 
imperfect theories which are always changing. Prabhupada said the dinosaurs existed and they were at the end of the Kali Yuga. The end of the Kali Yuga becomes so bad that a, a species of animals come in the form of dinosaurs when people are so sinful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the Kali Yuga. So that's there. But we don't accept the, their evidence because their means for understanding and their ability to, to explain things are all based on their own perfect senses. We take what Krishna says, we take the Vedic versions like that. Yeah, I did. To, yeah, if you're running across people like this, though, it's very hard to explain to these types of people. Yeah, obviously, that's their occupation. They're going to give you what they, they're going to give you what they're paid for. <laughs> and you'll find even amongst those people within the same life, same categories, they all disagree anyway. <laughs> they don't agree with each other. It's like this, it's like one comes up with a new theory like this and that. It's like one, one devotee was telling Prabhupada about one scientist, he said, you know, we've come up with this new theory and in our previous theory, we didn't have any evidence that it was true, but at least in this theory, we have a little evidence that it is true. <laughs> 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 it's all you know if you listen to the news or the newspapers or the new you know you just get <laughs> you become you become just like them confused <laughs> yeah it, like, it, it's like a child trying to try to catch the mood with moon with a mirror you know Look, mommy, I got the moon. He got a, he's got a mirror. And he's reflecting the moon in the mirror, right? <laughs> I got the moon. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. You know, you were talking about the Mensa people. Um, I had known someone who uh, associated with the group of Mensa people. And uh, we were she was a complete atheist. And I yeah. and I said, well, what, you know, she said, there's, there's, I said, there has to be a reason why all of this came about. And she said, oh, no, there, there, do, there doesn't have to be. It could have been a complete accident. <laughs> I, you should tell her, yeah, you also took birth by accident. That's all. <laughs> she thought that, that it was just a complete coincidence that we came about. Yeah. And I, where, you know, where, where do you find anything that's created without a creator? Show me, give evidence where there is a creation without some intelligent form as an, an initiator of the creation. Even though you can't see, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay. You can't, if you, if you turn on your light, you turn your switch on, you get light. So you might say, wow, that bulb is making light. And the bulb is not making the light. The light is coming from the, the powerhouse. And the powerhouse is not even doing it. The man who runs the powerhouse is making the power go out. So behind you know, the electricity going out in the form of light everywhere, there's a person. You have your computer, but you got to turn it on. <laughs> you got to work it. <laughs> It's a great machine. So this material energy is a great machine, but there's an operator behind it. Even from a logical point of view, they don't have any, yeah. Truth to Karma's, uh, you know, book forbidden of archeology span is a great. The thing is, there is a whole group of atheists that want to destroy the idea of God because then they can't put their theories out. 
They can't make their money. They can't do their scientific experiences. There was one, there was one astronaut when he went up in space in the space shuttle, when he got so high and up, he was actually having a religious experience when he got up. When he came back, he talked about that and that was the last thing he said. After that, they discredited him and never let him speak. There's, you know, there's a, there's a whole, uh, you know, theory to destroy the presence of God within society, you know? <clears throat> or to relegate God as to somebody's opinion. My opinion is God is like this. My opinion is God is like that. Who cares about your opinion? My opinion is that the sun rises in the west. <laughs> That's nice. But the sun will rise in the east, no matter what your opinion is. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That, that helps, you know, if I'm going to explain something to somebody who's, uh, um, you know, an impersonalist. I mean, there are so many, you know, that are now, uh, well, you know, my opinion of God is, uh, it's to God is nature, you know, and to, to be able to explain to them uh, that that's just one God. little piece of it. Yeah, God works through nature, but God is not nature. Nature is God is en God's energy, that's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, you, a lot of, a lot of these people, you, you can't argue with them because they don't have any 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 common sense. <laughs> Before you can have to understand something, you gotta have some intelligence. You don't have any intelligence. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Today's session was like quite uh, like, uh, enlightening. Like uh, I would say, uh, because I have learned many things which uh, we don't usually read in usual textbooks from childhood, right? So I have a doubt. Uh, the scientists say that universe is ex expanding, ever expanding. So can we like uh, believe it or like can we infer it anything? Like uh, the can we say that Krishna's energy is ever expanding and he's making many, many souls. He's creating souls. Material oh, energy, mater material energy doesn't expand. Material energy combines with other material energies to produce something else. Spiritual energy expands. So in the Bhagavatam, yeah, yeah in Bob, spiritual energy expands. But when spiritual energy contacts material energy, it looks like material energy is expanding, but it's not. It's the spiritual energy touching the material energy that makes the material energy move in certain directions and interact with other forms of material energy to create another type of material energy. That's all. Spirit, matter is dead. Matter is dead. And matter, earth, water, fire, air, ether. It makes up the... These things have to be touched by something living before it can act and react or interact also. So it says the, the universe is 8 million miles in diameter. So the souls are being created, the spiritual sparks, they're always being created and they're expanding. Can we infer this? Spiritual sparks are never created. Anything that is spiritual is eternal. 
spiritual means doesn't doesn't take birth doesn't die it exists eternally that's god and that's god's spiritual energy which is the living beings us we are eternal but the material energy is the energy that's made up of these five elements earth water fire air ether you combine these elements together in different ways and you get different things you get houses you get cars you get you know computers so the spiritual energy the living entity touches the material energy and makes it in, makes it act and interact but without the touch of spirit nothing moves mm -hmm. Just like a dead body and a live body. A dead body is a body without the spirit and a live body is a body with the spirit. If you take, if you have a person who is alive and then they die, you find that that body after they die is heavier than it was when they were living because the spirit is gone and therefore it just becomes dead dull matter now spirit is light just like uh, you know if you take a body you, and you can float it on the water if there's somebody in it but when there's nobody in it it just sinks into the... so matter is dead there's no, there's no life to it it doesn't move on its own it needs the touch of spirit to move. So the spirit is never created. Spirit is always existing. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, never was a time that I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, referring to the kings on the battlefield, nor in the future so, so any of us each cease to be. Krishna is explaining that Living beings are eternal. Matter is temporary. Matter goes through changes due to its contact with material being, the soul. If the soul is in the body, the body will grow and go through its different phases of life. As soon as the soul leaves, the body stops wherever the soul leaves and doesn't grow anymore. It's the touch of spirit that makes everything move. And spirit is not a creation. Spirit is, a, is an energy of the Lord that is eternal. As Krishna is eternal, so his spiritual energy is also eternal. Is that, is that clear? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Ma Maharaj, often we see that astrologers says that uh, it, it is all predestined. They can predict everything. So if they can predict everything, um, it is predestined. That means uh, annually it will happen. We are going to choose something. So if we are not able to choose something, how can there be right and wrong? Because anyway, it will happen. No, predestination is influenced by uh, what they say is if you follow, if you study a certain pattern and you understand the nature of that pattern, then it's logical that things will move in the same direction. But at any time, due to you what is called free will, you can change that, that pattern. It's like we were patterned to become you know, materialists. And now we came to Krishna consciousness. So based on our free choice, we directed our life towards devotion. So this idea of predestination is simply a theory based on understanding how matter works in a certain way. But that doesn't, that doesn't include the principle of free will. Free will can change. So does that will mean, is yeah. your choice. So you can choose that at any that would... Okay. So does that mean that 
we are mechanical beings and we have patterns and that can be predicted but when it when we turn into krishna consciousness then we have free wills and the astrologer may not understand how the, the uh, how the person will be uh, exert, exerting his choices because once somebody is krishna consciousness uh, is in krishna consciousness he has choice so out of whatever now he is he's an intelligent man and an intelligent man can do something which the astrologer cannot predict is that so yeah but your free your your free choice is influenced by your karma that's the whole thing you have a tendency that tendency is your karma it's pushing you in a certain direction unless you make a concerted effort to change your directed your direction, you'll go in the same direction. When we are not mechanical beings, we're spiritual beings, we're sentient beings. We're not mechanical at all. Yes. So our karma, it's you karma. It's, it's your karma yes. that's pushing you in a certain direction to think and act in a certain way. You can change your karma by free will. But you have to understand your free will has to be stronger than your push of your karma. Because if you're just like people want to change, they have a certain habit and they want to change, but they can't change because they're being pushed in the same direction by that habit, by that karma. But if you make a, a, a stronger effort, then you can change. And that stronger effort comes by associating with those persons who you want to become like. That's why we say, if you want to become a devotee, you have to associate with devotees. If you want to become a devotee and you're still associated with non-devotees, you won't become a devotee. So even your desire has to be stronger than what your karma is pushing you. And that desire has to bring about change due to association like that. Otherwise, you can't change. I'll give you an example. It's easy to understand. You're driving in your car. You're going down the highway. You come to a, a curve in the road, a sharp curve. So you're going 50 miles an hour. And the curve says slow to 25 miles. So in order to make the curve, you have to slow your speed down to 25 and then you can curve, make the curve. If you continue to go 50 miles an hour and try to make that curve, there's a good chance you won't make the curve and you'll go in the same direction. So you see the point. The point is that we are put being pushed in a certain direction by our material car and unless we unless we have a, a concerted effort based on good association and strong desire we will continue to go in the same direction we're going people, thank you Maharaj. people want to change and sometimes they change for one day or two two days and then they go back to doing the same thing they do again after two days because their their karma is stronger than their desire yes thank you very much for this wonderful class and i am exhilarated for this wonderful discussion thank you thank you very much Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, will you allow me to ask you a question? Yeah, who's speaking? This is Hari Radha from Washington. Hey, okay, Maharaj, Radha. my my question was that um, I have a devotee friend, and he's a bit senior from me, and he says that once we come to Krishna consciousness, our karma changes, and we become spiritualized, and we do japa, hari nam, sankirtan, book distribution, eat prasadam, and goes on spiritual activities. And but then at the same time, we do mixed devotional service where we bring in 
material contamination activities while watching TV, while doing japa, um, while driving the car, cussing at the same time, getting frustrated, and then uh, the four illicit things Prabhupada has told us to give up, doing all those four things, but at the same time continuously also doing the Harinam Sankirtan movement and saying that all my karma that I'm doing will not be uh, coming back to me in any other lives. Either I would get another life as a devotee in a very rich family, or but but, but the karma that I did, including the devotional service, uh, the bad karma that I did, including the devotional service, that karma will not touch me. And and the other thing he does that it says is that the Prabhupada Ji and God Krishna will decide after that where I will go because I belong to Him. And no matter what I do with my body, you know, bad or good, spiritual or material, it is still them to decide where I will go and what I will be in my next life, if I be with them or if I not be with them. And my bad karma will not touch me. And the example you gave of this uh, king where he he shot an arrow and he killed all the birds and the mother of the bird flew away or something. And then he got into a karmic reactions where he had to be reborn again and after fifty lives and so then he and then and then he had to take his karma's results. So this this devotee that is saying this is is it right? That he'll never ever get reactions of his um karma reactions because now he has become a devotee though he is in devotees um body but at, uh, and he still it, continue to it, it give time. up before yes it yes takes, of course it does it but this time. person knows the entire philosophy of krishna the, consciousness. the, thing, the thing is Prabhupada said once you come to krishna consciousness then you have to stop your material activities if you okay. continue to Continue your material activities, you'll get a reaction for that. So this is a beautiful answer you just gave me. So this is it. Yeah. Krishna is merciful, but still he doesn't tolerate you continuing. He says, all right, now come and engage in spiritual activities and give up your material activities. If you still engage in material activities, you'll get a reaction to those. Thank you, Maharaj. I bow down to your lotus feet. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to you, Maharaj. Very, very nice class and very nice discussion. We love the Fridays. You know. So thank you so much. We have some questions on the chat box. If you have time. Yeah, today we're okay. We have some time. Is this Shyamagari speaking? Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Are okay. you done with your lunch and everything? Lunch is still coming up. So, <laughs> so are you eating so, late? No, that's all right. Uh, breakfast was a little later than usual today, so lunch is can be late. But I need to want, do one thing. You can still speak. I just need to uh, take the offering off my altar and close the deities, and then I can hear you if you keep keep speaking. Okay. Yeah. So, Indu Mataji, can you read the questions? Because there are many questions on chat. Mm. Yeah, Lalita Mataji and Dina Bhandu Prabhu is asking. Indu Mataji, do you want to read? Hare Krishna Mataji? Yeah, yes, Mataji. Can you read the questions on the chat box? Okay, uh, so Lalita Mataji and Dina Bhandu Prabhu had asked, uh, Dear Maharaj, how does the soul come down from rain into grain? and eaten by humans relate to taking human birth from cow, tiger, and monkey. Thank you. So what is the question? 
how does the soul come down from rain into grain and eaten by human relate to taking human birth from cow, tiger, and monkey? <laughs> how does it happen? <laughs> That's the arrangement of the Lord. Yeah. That's how it, you know, and then it's eaten. And then when the soul enters into the grains and then you eat the grain, then when the man connects with the woman, he fertilizes the woman and then the soul is transferred to the, to, from the man to the woman. The woman provides the, man, the body, the man provides the soul. And then another birth comes. So born in coming from this monkey, tiger and cow, that's, that's a different, different connect, different subject matter. That's not related to that. So that's God's arrangement. Mara, Hare Krishna Maharaj, the next question is, how can, we, how can we be expected to have a balanced karmic lifestyle if we are not taught about the intricacies of karma in detail? You don't have to, you don't have to work. As soon as you take up devotional service, then the resultant actions of your previous karma are burnt up by the power of your devotional service. You don't need to worry about how that how karma is working. It's being destroyed by devotional service. As long as you perform material activities, you get karma. When you perform spiritual activities, Krishna explains in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita that devotional activities produce no karma. Sp and not, not only does devotional service not produce karma, it destroys one's previous karmic reactions. So gradually, as we're engaging in devotional service, our karma is being burnt up. We're not, have, we're not having to have, get the results of our previous karma. That is the power of devotional service. That is the mercy of the Lord. Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dandavat Pranam. Maharaji, can I ask a similar question? Uh, because in Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna has mentioned various types of uh, processes and paths for even atheistic people or people who are in between and not there completely in pure devotion and etc. So uh, what about those people who are kind of atheistic or who are not interested in Krishna consciousness or in any other form of religious uh, principles? So what about them? Because for them, uh, they are at the level of karma yoga or, or just they have to deal with karma. So uh, because then Krishna says that it is difficult to understand the intricacies of karma. So if we are not taught about it, how can we, uh, where can we derive the guidance? Because even in this material world, many a times we are faced with ethical dilemmas in which we don't know which is right or which is wrong or in a particular situation, what is right or what is wrong. So how is it possible for us to understand whether what I am doing is right or not karmically and not according to my own wish? Yeah, Thank you, man. You have, you, have, you have your scriptures. You follow the scriptures. You follow the guru. They tell you there are two things, anukulena and pratikul. Anukulena means what is favorable. And pratikul means what is unfavorable. So the scriptures explain the two categories. You have to follow what is favorable for your advancement in spiritual life and avoid what is unfavorable. Outside that, you have what is called morality, which is the basis of spirituality. And that is also mentioned in the scriptures. What are the principles of morality that leads to 
um, successful execution of spirituality. So, Maharaj, do you mean uh, uh, the by morality? Do you mean the principles that are mentioned in Manu Samhita, or or no, where do we find? Just just take what Prabhupada has given you. He gave you everything, all in his books, his purports in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Nectar Devotion, his lectures. Everything is there. You don't have to go outside because. All the Manam Samhita depends on time, place, and circumstance, and times change. And so Prabhupada is giving us the formula for the execution of devotional service and how to do it in such a way that we will get, will get the full benefit of our activity. It's easy. Why do, we have, why do we have to go, why do we neglect the Guru? The Guru is the, is the way to Krishna. He's giving not only guidance, he's giving the knowledge. That's his whole thing. Why did Prabhupada write hundreds of books? Everything is there. He wasn't trying to be a big author so he could get some acclaim for being an author. These books are for us. Everything's in his books. What to do, what not to do. Every, all the, you know, any answers, any questions you ask, Prabhupada answered it. And his lectures are in his books. It's all there. We don't have to speculate. It might be like this, or it's like this, or it's like this. That is so true, Maharaji. But uh, what about people who are not following Srila Prabhupada, who are not interested in Krishna consciousness? Because they also need some guidelines according to their consciousness and their levels. Uh, All to right. understand. Well, what kind of guidance are you going to give them? Mm -hmm. I mean, the day-to-day -day activities, and uh, we always face this dilemma. Okay, whether oh. it's this right get or wrong. The, just get them to chant Hare Krishna, give them some prasadam to eat. Purify their existence, and then they'll start to understand what to do. If you're trying to, if you're trying to correct people on the on, on, on the little things that they do all day, you know, you'll you'll look like somebody who's just a big fault finder. That's all. If you want to get rid of the darkness, bring in the sunlight. If you if you're in the midst of complete dark and darkness and you light a match, what will that match do? Bring in the sunlight. The sunlight is the holy name. The sunlight is Krishna Prashadam, Prabhupada's books. We're not trying to make them better materialists. We're trying to bring them out of that. <laughs> what is the use of going from, you know, from the mode of ignorance to the mode of passion? There's no value in that. Get them to the get them to the mode of uh, transcendence, Krishna consciousness. It's easy. Just preach Krishna consciousness. Give them Krishna. Teach them how to chant Hare Krishna. And you can use different ways to encourage them. Everyone wants to be happy. Now, this is the formula. This is the formula for happiness. <laughs> Jan Hare Krishna. Take prasadam. Learn about who you are. Learn about God. We're not trying to readjust our material life. It's not, you know, you just waste your time with that. Thank you so much, Maharaji. And the point was very logical that we are not trying to make their material lives better. So that really clicked. Thank you very much, Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Hare. Continue with your questions. I'm listening. Uh, there is just one more Maharaj, and that is also uh, that's from Kasturi Harini Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, if practicing devotional service to Lord can reduce karmic reaction, then why does one fall after practicing it for many, many years? 
Mataji, would you like to unmute yourself? Well, why does one fall? That's a number, it could be a number of reasons. One could commit offenses that could make you fall. One could be attached to keeping material desires and not willing to give up their material desires. And by that continual attachment, it'll take you back to material life again. There's, there's many reasons why you can fall. You can fall by not understanding how to execute bhakti in the right way, and therefore not get the benefit of bhakti, although you get some benefit. You have to understand each situation in, in, individually. It's not a, there's not a general answer. Some people fall because they still don't want to give up their material attachments. They still want to enjoy the material world and become, you know, God conscious at the same time. It's like trying to mix oil and water. You can go on like that for some time, but after some time, something will give. Either your material desires will take you out of Krishna consciousness or your spiritual practice will destroy your material desires. You can't stay, you can't just say, well, I'm gonna have this much material desires and this much Krishna conscious, it doesn't work. Because there are two opposite energies. One is working one way, one's working the complete opposite way. You have to go with one of them. So people take up Krishna conscious, but still after some time, they go back to the material life again. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Manusana Sahasrishu Yasyatyatadi Kinchitaye Yatatam Abhisithanam out of many thousands of Hmong persons who take up spiritual life, hardly one knows me in truth. Hardly one actually reaches liberation. And those who are actually liberated, hardly one knows me in truth. So it's a process. It's a process. Material life is a process. Spiritual life is a process. We, the, uh, the process also explains what is the anarthas. There are, there are anarthas. Anarthas means unwanted things. If we keep unwanted things, just like if we, you know, if we're, we cook a nice sweet rice, but we put a little bit of sand in it, just to give it a crunchy, you know, texture, and ruin the complete taste of the sweet rice. So we're still mixing in our material desires with our spiritual practice. And if we continue to do that, despite Krishna is trying to encourage us to give it up, then after some time, you know, you'll go back to material life again. All right, Maharaj. A very clear picture to me. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Kasturi. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Those are all the questions. I think we have covered all of them. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Yeah, my... No question, we can stop, Maharaj. And thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your precious time to us. We are so fortunate to have you on the call every Friday. Mm -hmm. Would you like to end with some japa or would you like to close now? Uh, yeah, we can do one round of japa. Okay, so we'll begin. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Gaur Bhakti Vrinda, 
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dadhar Sri Vansadi Gaur Vanta Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Rama Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Krishna 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 Hari Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Hari Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Hari Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krish
Thank you, Maharaj. 